I had to move my bed so we could film in front of the brown shelves. So because of the manual labor that I just had to do, you should definitely like and subscribe. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, hi, welcome home. My name is Sonia and I'm so happy you summoned upon this channel. Today, I wanted to share with you guys some of my favorite reads of all time. I couldn't believe that I haven't filmed a video like this yet, so I thought, why not do it for this week's video? There is no particular order for these books. I just went through my shelves and remembered loving a book that I read and I just put it in this pile. Now, caution, some of these books I haven't read since high school, so I honestly just completely forgot what they were about. I just remembered loving them so much. So for some of these books, I will read you guys a synopsis because if you've been here for a long time, you know that I, for the life of me, cannot summarize a book in my own words unless I take like two hours of my time before I film to write out a script. And I didn't want to do that today because it's already four o'clock in the afternoon and I still have to study for the LSATs. So <laughs> with that being said, um... Hopefully this video can convince you guys to read some of these books if you haven't already. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into the video. The first book on my pile is My So-Called Bollywood Life by Nisha Sharma. This book is about a girl named Winnie Mehta who was never really convinced that Raj was her soulmate, but their love was written in the stars. Literally, a pandemic predicted Winnie would find the love of her life before her 18th birthday and Raj met all of those qualifications. Which is why she is shocked when she finds her boyfriend of three years hooking up with another girl after she comes back home from her summer film camp. What's even worse is that Raj is named chair of the student film festival, a spot Winnie was counting on for her film school applications. And as a self-proclaimed Bollywood expert, Winnie knows this is not how her perfect ending is scripted. Then there's Dev, a fellow film geek and one of the few people Winnie can trust to help her reclaim control of her story. Dev is smart and charming, and he challenges Winnie to look beyond her horoscope and find someone she would pick for herself. But does falling for Dev mean giving up on her prophecy and her chance to live happily ever after? To find her perfect ending, Winnie will need a little bit of help from fate, family, and of course, a Bollywood movie star. So I believe I gave this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars or a 5 out of 5 stars. I read this book in high school and I loved it so much. It's one of the first books that I read that talked about the subject of Bollywood. Let's, let's put it that way. And I loved it because I myself... I kind of am a self-proclaimed Bollywood expert. My family usually calls me when they need like a Bollywood movie recommendation or if they don't know what a Bollywood song is or what happened with this actor or actress. So I'm kind of like the, the hub of all of the Bollywood knowledge for my family. And when I read that Winnie was a self-proclaimed Bollywood expert, I knew that I had to buy this book because I'm like, I am too. I loved it so like I loved it I'm gonna keep saying this so many times throughout this video but this book was amazing high school me appreciated this book a lot too because I felt like I wasn't alone when I read this book I remembered I was like smiling to myself I remember thinking I know that movie reference because that's one of my favorite movies and it was just a fun fun time so if you are a fan of Bollywood I highly recommend you read this book because it will lift your spirits. It'll make you happy, it'll make you fuzzy inside, and it is overall just, it's amazing. And I cannot wait to read more by Nisha Sharma. The next book on the pile is going to be Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alarasanis. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. I'm pretty sure it's not. So this book is about two boys named Dante and Ari. And it seems like a boy like Dante with his open and unique perspective on life would be the last person to break down the walls that Ari has built around himself. But against all odds, when Ari and Dante meet, they develop a special bond that will teach them the most important truths of their lives and help to find the people they want to be. But there are big hurdles in their way and only by believing in each other and the power of friendship can Ari and Dante emerge stronger on the other side. I read this book in Sedona in the summertime. And I read it in one day. This book, for me at least, was the perfect summer read. It was amazing. Absolutely amazing. The second I started it, I couldn't put it down. I forgot if I already said this, but I finished this book in a day. And 
it was just great it was so great the one thing that i absolutely loved about this book was the bond that was forged between dante and ari it was raw beautiful it was just it was amazing. There's a reason why this book has this many medals. That's all I'm gonna say. I am planning on doing a reread of this book because I loved it that much. It's just, it's so good. It's so good. See, this is like, this is why I don't do book reviews because I can't, like, how do I express my emotions? The only thing that's gonna come out of my mouth is I loved it and it's so good and you should read it. And that should be enough for you. Okay, the next book. Percy Jackson and the Olympians, book one, The Lightning Thief. So you guys already know what this book is about. I know you do. This is a middle grade fantasy and it is about Greek mythology. Pretty sure everybody on the booktube side can agree with me that all of our Greek mythology knowledge comes and stems from Percy Jackson because mine does. This series will always and forever be one of my favorite series. I love Percy. I love Annabeth. I love Grover. I love everything about this series. And one thing that I could always count on with this series in particular, no matter how many times I read it, I'm always going to end up laughing, reminiscing over how much I loved it in the past, and thanking my lucky stars that I found this book in Goodwill. When I first started reading, I didn't know what per who Percy Jackson was, and I was in Goodwill with my mom, and I found this book, and I was like, all right, it looks it looks interesting. Let's buy it. And I remember finishing this book, and I went to my mom. I was like, please, mother, I need the rest of this series. Please, 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 please. And she bought me the rest of the series for Christmas, and I ate it up. It was amazing. I loved it so much. The next book on the pile is You Reach Sam by Dustin Fowle. This is a recent read of mine. I read this in February and I gave this book a five out of five stars. This book was just... I don't even know how to explain it. I've said this so many times before but if I ever meet Dustin Thao in real life I will have to just stare at him for a solid five minutes and debate whether I should slap him or hug him because this book played with my emotional strings. It made me tear up. I didn't cry, but I did tear up a lot while reading this book. So for those of you who don't know, this book is about 17-year-old Julie Clark who has her future all planned out. She is supposed to move out of her small town with her boyfriend Sam, attend college in the city, spend a summer in Japan, but then Sam dies and everything changes. Heartbroken, Julie skips his funeral, throws out his belongings, and tries everything to forget him. But a message Sam left behind her in a yearbook forces memories to return. Desperate to hear him just one more time, Julie calls Sam's cell phone just to listen to his voicemail recording. And Sam picks up the phone. The connection is temporary, but hearing Sam's voice makes Julie fall for him all over again. And with each call, it becomes harder to let him go. This book is about love, loss, and what it means to say goodbye. The cover of this is beautiful. The writing in here was beautiful. The relationship between Julie and Sam was beautiful. I already had a feeling when I first found out about this book and I read the synopsis, I already predicted this was gonna be a five-star read. I just didn't know what I was really getting myself into until I started reading and piecing everything together a little bit by little bit. And I actually did tab the book as well, which I rarely, I rarely tab books because I just don't, I don't prefer to tab. But this, this was great. This was really amazing. Heartfelt, heartbreaking, lovely. It was just, it was great. It was amazing. The next recommendation is four books, actually. It's a whole series. It is a DC icon series, which consists of Wonder Woman Warbringer by Lee Bardugo, Batman Nightwalker by Marie Lu, Catwoman Soul Stealer by Sarah J. Moss, and Superman Dawnbreaker by Matt De La Pena. So this is actually a five book series. The fifth book is called um, Black Canary Breaking Silence. I haven't read that one yet, but I have read all four of these books and I enjoyed every single one of them. Now you may be thinking, Sonia, you're a Marvel fan. What are you doing? Hear me out. I love the DC animated series and movies over the live action. And I was a little curious because you guys know Sarah J Maas is my favorite author. 
So when I found out about Catwoman, I went to Target and I bought the book and I was like, okay, hold on. There's more in the series. So I found Wonder Woman and I found Batman and I bought those as well. What I didn't know was that these guys are actually retellings of the origin stories of these characters. And it's really good. Like it's, it's a twist and I like it. And I think that each of these authors did a really good job with the characters that they chose to write about. And if you guys couldn't tell, Catwoman is my favorite one out of the bunch. I am excited to read Black Canary, but I gotta say, Catwoman is really good. I do also like the Batman one. So if you are a fan of DC Comics, then I recommend you read those books because who knows, maybe you might appreciate them. The next book on the pile is The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. So this is a book talk recommendation. If you guys are on book talk, you've probably already seen this book floating around. It is super popular. I was like, it can't be that good, but I want to read it because book talk is like, oh my God, it's so spicy. It's not that spicy, by the way. And I loved it. I love Olive and Adam's relationship. It's their banter for me, the, the grumpy sunshine trope, the fake dating trope, everything about this book I just loved. And you all probably already know what this book is about, but this is great. I, I loved this book. So if you guys love the grumpy sunshine trope, the fake dating trope, you guys are definitely going to love this book. The next book is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This is another book that I read recently and I gave this book a five out of five stars. This book was great. I loved it. I got this recommendation from Book Talk because Book Talk said that this was spicy. So I did a little experiment and I was like, let's see for myself. It was the same thing I did with the Love Hypothesis. I wanted to read it because I wanted to see how spicy the book was. Honestly, it's just on the subject of spice right now. This book is super steamy. It's not that spicy. It's very steamy, but I love this book. I know a lot of people who have already read it mentioned they don't like it because I will be honest, there's a lot of times that Lucy mentions her height. She is, I believe, five feet tall, and she mentions it a lot. I'll be honest with you guys, I didn't really care because I'm five feet tall, and I'm like, yeah, I understand, because I do that a lot. So that part didn't really bug me, but that is just like a fair warning. She does talk about her height and complains about it quite a bit throughout the book. But if you overlook that and you just want to read this because of the enemies to lovers thing, you're going to like this book. It was so good. And it is actually now a major motion picture starring the girl from Pretty Little Liars. I don't know her real name, but I actually also watched the movie and the movie was just as good. It was actually followed the book pretty well. There was a few differences. However, it was still really good. I really did enjoy this book. Again, anything that's got to do with enemies to lovers, you know that I'm a huge fan of and I will be willing to read the book because that is one of my favorite tropes and I love this book. Okay, the next book on the pile is The Rise of Kiyoshi by F.C. Yi. So this book, this beautiful book is about the origin stories of Avatar Kiyoshi. Personally, I believe her to be one of the most badass avatars ever i love her so when i found out that there was a book about her i damn near lost my mind this book was so good and avatar the last airbender is literally my childhood i love atla i watched it so many times as a kid i'm pretty sure i watched the series like a good five times i can never get over avatar and i love it so much this book was really 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 good if you guys love avatar you should definitely give this book a try i think personally my love for this is more heightened because of the fact that kiyoshi is one of my favorite avatars she's probably like number one if i'm being honest i love the fact that we got to see how the world was before ang this was what because it was kiyoshi then it was roku and then i think it was ang so there's a lot of stuff that's a little bit different but again i loved kiyoshi i loved her relationships with her friends and her lover and this is a duology and i remembered i tried to read the second book so slowly because i didn't want it to end but then i ended up like finishing it and i think in like a week and i was like damn now what but I found out that there is another book following our other avatar. I believe it was Young Chen. And I believe it is also goes over her origin story as well. I do not own it, but 
I am trying to because I want to read that book as well. The next book is going to be A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Calvario. So I read this because Sherlock Holmes is one of my favorite classic novels of all time. I love listening to the audiobooks of Sherlock Holmes. I love the whole dark academia vibe I get from him. I love listening to the cases that he solves with Watson and his adventures. It's it was it's amazing. I love Sherlock Holmes. So when I found out about City and Scarlet and I saw that this was basically Sherlock Holmes if she was a girl and a little bit younger, I was like, ooh, yes. So I bought it and I read it and I loved it. So let me also read you guys the synopsis of this book though. The last thing Jamie Watson wants is a rugby scholarship to Sheringford, a Connecticut prep school just an hour away from his estranged father. But that's not the only complication. Sharing Ford is also home to Charlotte Holmes, the famous detective's great-great-great-granddaughter who has inherited not only Sherlock's genius, but is also his violet temperament. From the moment they met, there is a tense energy between them and they seem more destined to be rivals than anything else. But when a Sharing Ford student dies under suspicious circumstances, ripped straight from the most terrifying of the Sherlock Holmes stories, Jamie can no longer afford to keep his distance. Jamie and Charlotte are being framed for murder. If you guys are fans of Sherlock Holmes, I do highly recommend this book. Even if you aren't and you are fans though of mysteries and murder cases, you should read the book because it's good. It's also on bookoutlet.com. Okay, the next book I see is Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. So this is a trilogy and I'm actually reading the last book right now. Let me read you guys a synopsis for this book because it can get a little bit hard for me to describe Aurora Rising. The year is 2380 and the graduating cadets of Aurora Academy are being assigned their first missions. Star pupil Tyler Jones is ready to recruit the squad of his dreams, but his own bone-headed heroism seems him stuck with the dregs nobody else in the Academy would touch. A coffee diplomat with a black belt in sarcasm, a sociopath scientist with a fondness for shooting her bunk bunkmates, a smart-ass tech whiz with the galaxy's biggest chip on his shoulder, an alien warrior with anger management issues, a tomboy who's totally not into Ty in case you were wondering. And Ty's squad isn't even his biggest problem. That would be Aurora G. Lynn O'Malley, the girl he just rescued from interdimensional space. Trapped in cryosleep for two centuries, Ayori is a girl out of time and out of her depth, but she could be the catalyst for a war millions of years in the making. And Tyler's squad of losers, disciplined cases, and misfits might just be the last hope for the entire galaxy. Nobody panic. Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff really did a number with me on this book. I loved it. Right now, the second book is my favorite in the series. However, I kind of want to see what the third book does to me because I am in love with this trilogy. I'm also really sad that this isn't talked about a lot on book talk or booktube because it's so good and I laughed also a lot which was su which surprised me. I laughed a lot while reading this book and one thing that I love about this book was the fact that in between some of the chapters the authors go over the definition of what some of the jargon in the books means for the readers throughout the books and in book two and in book three they give you a recap of all of the characters who they are who are they related to their personality to help you remember who they are and for me i love that because like if i don't read the second book right away i forget everything and i'm like who the hell are you who are you what's going on so i really really love that and i love the fact that they go through and add in like oh by the way this means that this means this i love that part i love the story i love everything about this book and i'm seriously i cannot wait to finish the third book i'm so excited that i'm finally reading the third book the next book well the next two is going to be Peter Nimble and His Fantastic Eyes and Sophie Query and The Lost Story Guard, both by Jonathan Oxier. I think that's how you pronounce the name. So these two books, I don't even have the words for these. These two books are probably one of my favorite books of all times. Let's start with Peter Nimble. It says, now, for those of you who know anything about blind children, you are aware that they make the very best thieves. This is the story of the greatest thief who ever lived. His name, as you've probably guessed, was Peter Nimble. Peter Nimble and his fantastic eyes is the utterly beguiling tale of a 10-year-old blind orphan who has been schooled in a life of thievery. 
One faithful afternoon, he steals a box from a mysterious traveling harbor dasher, a box that contains three pairs of magical eyes. When he tries the first pair, he is instantly transported to a hidden island where he is presented with a special quest to travel to the dangerous Vanish Kingdom and rescue people in need. Along with his loyal sidekick, a knight who has been turned into an unfortunate combination of horse and cat, and the magical eyes, Peter Nimble embarks on an unforgetful swashbuckling adventure to discover his true destiny. I knew nothing about this book. I saw it on bookgallery.com and I bought it. And I read it one day and I fell in love. All I can say is that it's whimsical, it's different, and I loved it. I honestly would reread this book more than two times that's how good it was for me it was amazing the second book also had me by my throat it was it was great like i loved it i loved it this video is like i'm not even convincing anyone i'm just like i love this book next <laughs> the next book is the little prince by I don't want to say his name because I'm going to butcher it, but I finally got my copy of The Little Prince. I first read the book on Prime Reads and I loved it. I actually watched the the mo the movie and this was before I read the book and I remembered I really did enjoy the movie. So I was curious to see how the book was and I loved the book. One of the things I loved about the book was the illustrations and I did actually see them as well on the um, Prime Reads version. And after I read it, I was like, I, I, want, I want my own copy. That's how much I enjoyed it. So I got it. This is a classic book. And this is about a pilot stranded in the desert awakes one morning to see standing before him the most extraordinary little fellow. Please, asks the stranger, draw me a sheep. And the pilot realizes that when life's events are too difficult to understand, there's no choice but to succumb to their mysteries. He pulls out pencil and paper, and thus begins this wise and enchanting fable that in teaching the secret of what really is important in life has changed forever the world for its readers. If you haven't read this book, I really, really suggest you read it. It is a quick read, beautiful, I think you will enjoy this. The next book is Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. And by the way, this is the main character. His name is Raph. If this isn't enough to convince you to read the book, I I don't know what to tell you, lady. I don't. This book is about Amelia and her twin sister, Victoria, who have been inseparable all their lives. As witches who exist secretly among humans, they know the dangers of drawing attention and work at their family's renowned Sicilian restaurant, avoiding notice and pers persecution. But one night, Victoria Victoria doesn't come home, and it's not long before distraught Amelia discovers the body of her beloved twin, desecrated beyond belief. Devastated, Amelia vows to find her sister's killer and seek vengeance at any cost, even if that means calling upon a dark magic that has long been forbidden. Then Amelia meets Wrath, one of the wicked, princes of hell she has been warned against since she was a child. Wrath claims to be on Amelia's side, tasked by his master with solving a series of murders on the island, of which Victoria is the latest victim. But when it comes to the wicked, nothing is as it seems. I loved this book so freaking much. And it wasn't because of just wrath. The plot of this book was super, super good. And I actually really did enjoy it. I love the fact that I was engaged a lot. Like, I didn't want to put this book down. I had to force myself to because I was still in school at the time when I was reading this book. And it was during finals. But I remembered I would eat this book up as much as I could when I wasn't studying. It was so good. The murder mystery, the dynamic between Wrath and Amelia, it was just beautiful. I haven't read the other two books, which both are out, by the way. I do own them. I'm just waiting to get my grimy little hands on them because I am excited to find out what's really going on in this world. The next book, ugh, is going to be House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Moss. This shouldn't come as a surprise to you guys. This is Sarah J. Moss's first adult fantasy book, and this is the first book in the series. This book is about Bryce Quinlan, who had the perfect life, working hard all day and partying all night, and that is until a demon murdered her closest friend, leaving her bereft, wounded, and alone. When the accused is behind bars, but the crime startup began, 
Bryce finds herself at the heart of the investigation, and she'll do whatever it takes to avenge their deaths. Hunt Athlar is a notorious fallen angel now enslaved to the archangels he once attempted to overthrow. His brutal skills and incredible strength have been set to one purpose, to assassinate his boss's enemies, no questions asked. But with the demon wreaking havoc in the city, he's offered an irresistible deal. Help Bryce find the murderer and his freedom will be within reach. As Bryce and Hunt dig deeper into Crescent City's underbelly, they discover a dark power that threatens everything they hold dear, and they find in each other a blazing passion, one that could set them both free if only they'd let it. I always recommend this book to people who are wanting to read adult fantasy books. As much as I love this book and gush about it, I will warn you guys if you are planning on reading this, it is super hard to get into. The first, I believe, like, 500 pages is just all world building and plot building so again it's kind of hard to get into however once you get to that that point in the book you will not be able to put it down and the second book is even better the second book I dude I literally could not put down the second book in this in this series it was amazing from page one to the last page it was just straight straight into it no stopping I feel like I was at full speed I it was it was great it was great like I I love Crescent City so much the next book this also should not come as a surprise is going to be A Court of Mist and Fury this is the second book in the Akatar series I just wanted to hold up this book because I like the cover a little bit more um, you guys already know what this book is about, so I'm really not going to go into much depth. This is probably one of my favorite books. However, I'm still debating between this and Silver Flames on which one's my favorite. Um, I did really enjoy Silver Flames a lot, so I'm planning on actually rereading the entire series so I can finally figure out which one's my favorite out of the entire series. Because right now it's between the second book and the fifth book. This next book shouldn't be a surprise also, but Throne of Glass by Sarah J Moss. This is her very first young adult series, and this is book one. I read this in high school the entire series and I loved it. I'm pretty sure you guys already know what this book is about. It's super super popular already on book two and book talk but this was the series that got me into young adult fantasy so if I haven't read this book I don't know where I would be in my life right now because it's because of that series that I love young adult fantasy. That's part of the reason why I love Sarah J Moss as well because I'm like if it wasn't for you if I didn't read those books I probably would not be as big of a reader as I am now. So I really have her to to thank. The next book is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. So this is another classic novel and this one is like the definition of dark academia. It is so good. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I can't tell you guys what this book is about because I don't remember. One thing that I will say with this book is that Oscar Wilde's writing, it sounds very poetic and romantic in a way, and that's part of the reason why I really liked it. The next book is The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. This is my edition where all of the books are in one bind. This is a children's fantasy classic series. And it's got seven books in here, and it was really good. I read this again in high school, and I loved it. Next, we have The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. This is another one of Book Talk's most popular books. I actually really did enjoy this book. This is another enemies to lovers fake dating grumpy sunshine trope. And it's about a wedding in Spain, an infuriating man, and three days to convince her family she's actually in love. Oh, this is also a workplace romance. So this is about a woman named Catalina Martin who's trying to find a date to her sister's wedding after she told her family about her American boyfriend. And now everybody knows that her and her boyfriend will be coming to her sister's wedding, and that includes her ex and his fiance. She only has four weeks to find someone who's willing to come with her, and Aaron Blackford offers to step in. She wants to refuse, however, she's desperate, and when the wedding comes near, Aaron looks like her best option, and she begins to realize he may not be as terrible in the real world as he is at the office. This book was amazing. Book Talk did mention that this was spicy, which is another reason why I bought the book. It is not that spicy. I probably would give it like a 2.5 or a 3 on my spice scale, 
but the plot and the story of the book I absolutely loved and again enemy lovers grumpy sunshine fake dating sign me the hell up next I've got Suicide Notes from Beautiful Girls by Lynn Wengarten. So this book is about Delilah who apparently burnt herself to death in her stepfather's shed. Everyone's saying that it was suicide, but June doesn't believe that. June and Delilah used to be best friends in the way that comes before everyone else. It was like being in love except more. They had an infinite number of secrets tying them together like thin silk cords. But one night, a year ago, everything changed. June, Delilah, and June's boyfriend Ryan were just having a little fun. Their good time got out of hand, and in the cold blue light of morning, June knew only this. Things would never be the same again. Now Delilah is dead, and June owes it to her to find out the truth, which is far more complicated than she ever could have imagined. So this book was recommended to me by my cousin Jasmine, and she was like, just read it, trust me, read it. Dude, this book was like, I was not expecting this book to be the way it was at all i was like reading it and i'm like what the hell did i just read i was so confused i read this during my 24-hour readathon i did a year ago i believe and you can see my in full reaction to what i was reading in the book honestly it was really good this book confuses me in a good way the last book on my list is to all the boys i loved before by jenny han now this book you already know what it's about so i don't really want to go into much depth about it but this book was one of those feel-good romantic books that i personally really did enjoy i really loved the trilogy a lot more than i thought i was going to like it and the first book I think is my favorite just because it's where it all started. One of the, my favorite things about this was Laura Jean and Peter's relationship. I love the way he treated her. And I just, I love Laura Jean. I loved her. The movies, out of all honesty, the first movie is the only one that I really enjoyed. The other two I kind of were like, eh, I wasn't a big fan of. But the first one I really did enjoy. And I actually rewatched it, I think, about two, three times already. So this is another really good romance story. It's one of those cute ones. This also does have a fake dating. And yeah, it's it's great. It's it's amazing. I loved it. Oh my god, I've been talking for an hour and I want to leave. Okay, I'm ending this video here. Um, I don't know how great of a job I did in trying to get you guys to read some of these books if you haven't already. Because I feel like I was just saying the synopsis and then i was like oh my god it's really good i loved it and that was it so we'll see i'm gonna go now but thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys in my next video bye mm -hmm.